You know, money problems should be over for William Seeley. He's a member of the Ocean 16 group that won last week's Powerball jackpot. With us here, Associate Professor of Marketing at Harvard Business School, Michael Norton, and Associate Professor of Psychology at the University of British Columbia, Elizabeth Don. They're co-authors of Happy Money, The Science of Smarter Spending. I need to read this book. I, it looks fascinating because we hear so many stories. You, we were just talking about this before. When the Powerball jackpots first started to be announced, I think they were all, you know, breaking news. And this person makes it, you know, and like five years later, somebody that wins $150 million is back in the trailer. And except the only difference is all their family members hate them. Uh, you talk about, and of course, MC Hammer, that didn't work out well either. Uh, <laughs> but you guys talk about uh, happy money, spending smart. Mm -hmm. And the first thing you talk about is don't buy things. Buy experiences. Talk about that. The idea here is that people consistently get more happiness from buying experiences, everything from the dream trip to Africa to that special meal out with your spouse, right. than from buying material things from couches all the way to houses. Yeah, and and you have great uh, great uh, you know trips, concerts, things like that. As you guys talk about uh, houses, expensive pens. They always disappoint. Material things, but experiences stay with you. One of the reasons is because when you buy something and it's a thing, over time it gets worse and worse because it yeah. gets old. A new TV is great and then it gets older and older. Right. Experiences are funny because you go on them and then when they're done, it's over so you don't have it anymore, but our brains make us remember them right. as being better and better. They and get better. better and better and better. Exactly. Right. So we get happier later from having experiences. Right. Okay, number two, make it a treat. What do you guys mean by that? This is a hard one where you're supposed to basically give things up. So whatever you love the best in the world, it could be coffee, it could be movies. Right. You've got to let it go for a little while because just like a TV, we get used to things and they get a little worse and a little worse. If you take a break from it, even just for a little while, research shows that when you come back to it, you'll crave it, you'll really anticipate getting it. When you come back, it's going to so be So you're, you're, you're saying I should not have like 12 ice smokers a day, that if I have like six for a few days, then I'll appreciate eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 more. Exactly. Okay, I love I, it. I won't give up the Ben and Jerry's, I can't. Do, do yeah. not do it. Now this is interesting, I love this. Buy time. Talk about, talk about buying time. So we argue that before you reach for your wallet, you should stop to ask yourself, how will this purchase affect the way I use my time? Yeah. So many things that we buy from, you know, a great new pair of shoes to a great dress, they're not going to have any impact on the way we spend our time. Right. And so what really matters for happiness is what we're actually doing with the minutes and the hours of our day. And so the best thing we can do with our money, in my opinion, is to uh, change the way we use our time for the better. Investing wisely, not, uh, not uh, you know, financially, but sort of, you know, spiritually, psychologically, right? That's right. You know, if you buy a house, you think it's going to be great, but you're actually buying a commute. Oh. And buying a commute is terrible time. You should never buy yourself a commute. Why don't you not buy the house and use the money for something that does, in fact, give you meaning or happiness? Yeah, what's a happiness cap? How high can it go? Yeah, Alex, you told me to ask him about the happiness cap. This is it's why you never listen to you. It's a cap with a smiley you. face on is it. it you, you, right? The hat, okay, the wait, put, that wait, come with wait, the book. Hold on a second. Okay, so put, 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 Alex, you know what? You just talk about it. You obviously well, read the book. Wait, 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 what's a happiness cap? Happiness does not increase after the $75,000 threshold, according to their book. So you, did you guys talk before you came on the show and decided that I would use a term and you guys would just leave me out here to hang? So I think, to I think what you're I'm not happy to, right now. I think what you're referring to what am is I referring the to? Uh, figure that's come out that uh, once people in the United States are making about $75,000 a year, right. additional income ceases to have any impact whatsoever on how much they laugh or smile on a given day. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? I, I, my son went down uh, with AmeriCares and, uh, to El Salvador. And he came back and said, Wait, what was it? He just said, they were destitute. It was absolutely awful conditions. There had been mudslides. He goes, and the thing that I just can't, I, I can't get past is just how happy everybody was there. I take it that's part of what we're talking about here. You just, you really can't buy happiness. And in fact, Sometimes the more you buy, the more problems you buy. That's exactly right. You know, if you think about 
when you had less money versus when you had more money, you still have the same family, the same friends, the same siblings. Most yeah. of the things in your life don't change no matter how much money you have. Yeah. And really it's about focusing on the things that really do make you happy. Focusing on money and money and money doesn't right. really do much for your happiness. We yeah. showed that great group, the Ocean 16, and there's been so much research done about lottery winners who retire right away, right. end up going down a bad path because they don't have the disciplines necessary. Most people that stay in their jobs, that keeps them on track and right. keeps them occupied. They yeah. feel uh, probably a lot safer about when they can pull the trigger to retire. But when you wrote this book, who were you aiming for? Millennials, Gen Xers, baby boomers? Because it seems as if a lot of our kids grow up nowadays very conscientious about cash uh, and then that institutes you know it's it's deep in us once we get to be adults I think we tried to write it for everybody so I think these core principles can be applied by young people trying to figure out how to use their first salary all the way up to you know adults retiring and figuring out okay now that I'm living on a more fixed income what am I going to do with it what am I going to make my priority and when do you come out with the happiness cap like the actual cap <laughs> with the smiley we need the cap with a smiley face yeah with a 75K on top. We've got yeah. a whole marketing campaign lined up. I love the hats. It. It's be great. Well, fantastic. We will buy buy all the cap. Not too many. <laughs> then we'll buy we'll buy just enough for happiness. All right, the book is Happy Money. Elizabeth Dunn and Michael Norton. Thank you guys so much. It looks great. Thank I can't you. wait to read it. Thanks.